today we are going to talk about very interesting topics as part of the advanced pediatric endocrinology symposium is being organized under the banner of medi classes grow society and regency hormone with support from novo nordisk uh, so we started off with pediatric endocrine awareness using workshops and uh, around 2011 we started the practical pediatric endocrine course then we conducted workshops across the country we had a workshop in patna also i think 10 years ago then we had got ppc across the country in jaipur we conducted then we realized that just doing workshop it will require a huge amount of time and other factors so we started on a more of awareness programs on social media and youtube channels then we started our on site fellowship that is 2017 and then we started the online program because that will give more access to people across the country and now we have the mobile application we have got the online fellowship programs the other factors which are available in that regards so over the last 10 years we actually when there was no covid we used to have every month one program here and there and we had got huge number of uh, practical courses workshop across the country but now good or bad or whatever we got more of online activities which are there and this time we have a hybrid program so the first advanced pediatric endocrinology symposium happened in 2017 i think dr sanjay and dr pradeep were both there in that program dr amit was also there in that program and uh, dr hemchand who is part of this program also was part of that program at that time two years back we had another big program with our on site course which was in 2019 again many of our uh, friends were there dr pragya and lot of other friends dr pratik was also there at that time then last year we did it more in a online mode and today it's a hybrid mode so all of you can access our youtube channel which now has got a huge number of videos on nearly every topic of pediatric endocrinology you can access them from there you can go to our website which provides lot of information and courses which are available including fellowship programs diploma programs for post graduates and we have got three specific uh, exclusive uh, grand rounds which happen on a complimentary basis every month we have one for advanced for in a fellow or a pediatric endocrinology perspective one for post graduates and recently we have started a post graduate lecture series for post graduates covering the basic topics in that uh, regards you can access our publication and our mobile application we are happy to announce that it is the most downloaded endocrinology app in the whole world it has already resulted in three publications and there are many other publications which are on pipeline so this is something which is becoming and we are going to enhance it very soon dramatically and we'll get many more interpretations coming out of from that who is to set up a way in which we can use technology to link different clinics together and to use technology to provide state of the art guidance in terms of immediate care management research and all those factors but uh, it will most important tool is what we call pi which will be a personalized intelligent state of the art emr so what it will do is that based upon the basic inputs that the doctors will give it will use ai multiple factors and then try to come out with the likely diagnosis investigation a lot of things will come up immediately diet charts will come up immediately so how it will work is that if you talk about if you put a particular complaint your field will come up like short stature you will have some questions on history and examination immediately you can assess bone age immediately you can assess puberty once you do that and put analyze button you will get a summary like this a lot of app outputs will now directly come out immediately on the press of the button the bone age will come like a proper report so you will which sites you have selected what were the basis and what were the bone age was there will come immediately and very importantly based upon the weight the bmi the diet preference the disease we will make a seven day diet chart to do in that situation now we all talk about how gonadotrophins play a important role in terms of pubertal development and other aspects we know that for girls the fsh is more important you might not even have lh you might be doing fine fsh becomes important but for boys what we always say lh is more important you may have zero fsh still you can have a lot of development which happens so what uh, we'll be doing is i'll going to talk about how we can treat the boys who present to us with congenital hypogonadotropic hypogonadism and this is a much more common presentation as compared to girls because as dr yutika said it is more like functional will be more common here the actual as we saw so many calamens and all those pictures will come so this is a big problem which whom will be dealing much before so how do we manage them and try to achieve good puberty as well as the good overall outcome in that perspective so we'll start off with three case scenarios which we like to focus in that setting and try to take forward 
a one year old boy with micro penis undescended testis familial already there is a family history you know that the elder sibling had a calvan kalaman syndrome now advise testosterone now whether this is right or wrong we'll discuss about that the second scenario is a 16 year old male who had delayed puberty anosmia so of course if you have anosmia in one uh, testicular volume low lh fsh inhibin b is low so this is classically a complete hypo hypo which we discussed yesterday advise hcg now whether that is appropriate or not and finally the third case a 28 year old follow up case of cranial irradiation with acquired gnrh deficiency and on treatment advise both hcg and hmg so we'll discuss about these three scenarios infancy puberty and fertility what do we do in that perspective now we all know that hypogonadotropic hypogonadism may have a variable course which may be there one is that if you have complete deficiency zero so it depends how many gnrh neurons are coming from the olfactory plaque cord to your area in the hypothalamus you have zero neurons no development will happen you have got 30 40 this is more like a figurative thing you will have delayed onset but then the onset will there that will be like cdgp but remember some of these cdgp may fail later on so whom you say cdgp may become permanent later on there could be those who may actually defined as congenital may improve also over time so there is a lot of variation so what i'm trying to say is that while we say constitutional delay is one condition and permanent hypo hypo is the other they are just the spectrum on one hand you have the most mild form is cdgp the most severe form is congenital edge so many patients are in between so you have to be very much aware about that in that perspective so we'll talk about those aspects now as discussed hypo hypo usually means gnrh deficiency that's pretty much what we talk about isolated hypogonadotropic hypogonadism you can really have problems in the fsh and lh that's more like a multiple pituitary hormone deficiency as dr yutika was talking about so you can have lot of genetic causes which all cause this we discussed it a lot yesterday and we'll discuss about diagnosis tomorrow you can have acquired causes now how are congenital causes different from acquired causes in congenital causes this child never received any gnrh so there was no fetal growth there was no mini puberty nothing while acquired had a fetal exposure had a mini puberty and then the puberty did not happen or was stopped at some point of time so one there is no priming to gonadotropins in congenital cases while there is priming in acquired cases which is a big difference so when we talk about the third case who had acquired uh, gnrh deficiency he is already primed so there you can give hcg alone we'll talk about why there is no need of hmg in that setting so that is a big difference the other thing is that of course you can have other features and really hyperprolactinemia these you should be able to identify before you think about treatment in that regard so this is what we are talking about self limited form of course you need to identify and there is a full talk tomorrow which will talk about how to identify cdgp from permanent hch then congenital of course and acquired they have a different treatment perspective so what do we do in terms of treatment now there is a possibility that you want to do nothing you say end organ i give testosterone i am happy my pubertal development will happen with that but when you give testosterone of course there will be no spermatogenesis there will only be pubertal development and when you give testosterone your lh will go down and when your lh will go down whatever chances of spermatogenesis is there will go so people have been scared of giving testosterone as pubertal induction saying that if you give testosterone you might compromise future reproductive potential we'll talk about that because that's an important question how do we handle that the other option of course is that testicular size does not change it remains small soft testis no role of fertility pubic hair will grow but they will not become curly this is what the that is the hcg effect basically now if you give gonadotropins it will increase testicular size it will cause sperm production or dr yutika has talked about that if you give gnrh which we talked so beautifully about the palm which is available it is another option and theoretically you can use kispeptin in certain situation particularly functional hypogonadotropic hypogonadism so we are predominantly talking about testosterone and gonadotropin which is there now one fundamental difference between the female reproductive maturity and male reproductive maturity is that spermatogenesis is a much more complicated process if you talk about a 1 ml testis 
from their sperms to form is going to take a huge lot of time because there is lot of fetal exposure which happens lot of mini puberty that's what is the priming is happening so if you had no development it will take up to a 6 month to 1 year for sperms to form while we discussed that only with 20 25 days 30 days you will get the eggs to form in a female perspective so this is a much more long duration much more challenging in terms of that but responses are very good in that regard the other big thing which is very interesting is that as i said if you have congenital hypo hypo the spermatogenesis they, they are never ever exposed to hcg in uh, lh in fsh now what will you happen if you give hcg testosterone will go up now testosterone will go up but your sertoli cells are not protecting the germ cells normal situation you see sertoli cells are really protecting the germ cells but here if the testosterone goes very high the whole process will cause lead to early death of these germ cells which is not good so if you have a congenital hypogonadotropic hypogonadism you have to give fsh priming then you give lh so no role of hcg alone in congenital hh this is very important to remember and that's why we are not using hcg for testicular descent this is again people used to give hcg for testicular descent it should be avoided so if you give fsh before that you will be able to save it now the presentation can be with micro penis cryptorchidism in the first year most present with delayed puberty rarely they will present with infertility so how do we manage and this is a wonderful consensus statement by the european society who talks about different age groups what to do what not to do so most cases that present to us with micro penis in the newborn period we usually give them testosterone because we are not bothered about fertility we give testosterone 25 mg monthly for three doses and that will be a good response in that perspective cryptorchidism never give hcg go for surgery that is a pretty much what they are trying to say but there is now a lot of interest especially in europe about whether if we mimic mini puberty at this time whether these children will have a better outcome later on so there are studies which have looked into that if you really treat them with gonadotrophins right at 3 months to 12 month period you may have some testicular size which will increase now my question is what is the point in increasing the size if ultimately they will again go back to normal and how will you treat you give a bi weekly injections at from 3 month to 12 month i think nobody will be very easily available to take that without a long term effect so theoretically there is a role but not practically in that perspective and they say also the same thing that there is a improvement which goes down once you stop treatment of course once you stop there will be there will be no increase which is happening now this is again about infusion of gonadotrophins now it is very difficult for us to give infusion in diabetes we are talking about insulin infusion where it is life saving giving gonadotrophins i don't think it is we are ready at the moment to give gonadotrophin to a infant just because thinking that they may improve later on so i would say this is experimental do not think about it blindly if you have congenital hypo hypo micro penis give testosterone three doses that is good enough do not give hcg that's another factor to remember now the second issue which is really debatable what about puberty during puberty what should be done shall we induce with testosterone or shall we induce with lh shall we induce with both lh and fsh this is a question some people who are against testosterone say by giving testosterone you will damage some of these germ cells because you are giving a high dose agree my point is most patients who have got 1 ml soft testis hardly have anything there so will it be further harmed is a question we have so many patients with kalaman syndrome who have been treated with testosterone once we give them hcg hmg they become fertile in the groups also we have couple of patients who became fertile with that so again just because there is some physiological basis doesn't mean that you need to change your protocol but yes there is a theoretical role if somebody can afford If somebody can give two injections every day, and we talked about the cost will be like around ten to twenty thousand a month, then you can give gonadotrophin. Japanese society say from twelve years till sixty years, give them HCG and HMG during that period. Not even HCG, HMG, recombinant LH and FSH, which is many times more expensive. But probably from our side, we are still talking about giving a testosterone induction, which is a reasonable response. The other problem is. many cases we don't know whether this is cdgp or this is actually hh 
So what do we do? So we generally give after around 14 years, in that cases, give 100 milligram, three doses. And after that, there is a response. Testosterone increases, fine. No response, give a repeat course. If testosterone is above 100, it is CDGP, nothing to worry. If there is no response, then you start thinking about this is more likely a HH or a permanent HH. Of course, if you have a child who has got anosmia, synkinesia, facial defects, uh, micro, uh, micropenis, uh, all those things, you know it is congenital HH, then there is a different story. Otherwise, in doubt, you can use this as a picture. A 15-year-old boy with delayed puberty, low LH, we gave testosterone 100 milligram, three doses. After three months, testicular volume increased. So it is a good sign. This means that he is now, you have kick-started, you have basically pushed the train and now it's going to start. And the testosterone level was also high. So nothing to worry. This is classical CDGP and we have seen many cases who respond like that. Now you have got this 17 year old boy on the other hand, delayed puberty testis is 3 ml. Now this is the time you have to start testosterone. So we started testosterone and gradually build it up. So this is how you go again, as Dr. Yutika said, 10% here we are 10 to 20% doses. So maybe 50 milligrams going up to 300 milligram, three weekly or 250 milligram, three weekly, which is the adult dose in terms of testosterone, which we will given that regard. So gradual increase over two year period, a similar sort of a picture that we do. And testicular volume is not increasing. It means it is a permanent hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. That, that is after giving uh, three doses of 100 Yeah. So yeah, in that setting. Will it, will it increase one, two? If the testicular volume increases, it means reversible. It, it may sometimes after two, three months, it may increase because it is increased. No, never. So I'll come to that. 15-year-old boy with delayed puberty, testicular volume 1 ml, but no anosmia. So we know it looks like hypo-hypo, but there is no calamine. LHFSH 0, everything is normal. Testosterone was given, 100 milligram monthly. Six months, the testicular volume increased to 6 ml. So remember, some of them whom you are labeling as permanent HH may actually be CDGP who will improve. So this may happen. Keep your... Uh, orchidometers open to look for your testicular volume. That will be important in that setting. And you will know that if there is an increase in testicular volume, this is more like a reversible factor, which is there in that scenario. And that becomes important. So why are monthly or even why not for days? No, no, we give monthly. Testosterone is monthly only. And later on, we go to three weekly. We'll talk about how to give, but monthly is the dose because this is a depot preparation. It will be there for a month. It will have a rise and then it will go like this for a month. Now, if you have permanent HH, usually we say if you know it is permanent HH because of whatever reason, 12 years may be the right time. Why wait till 14 in that setting? If you're in doubt, 14 is okay. But if it is anosmia is there, micropenis is there, you can start. But start at a lower dose, 25 to 50 milligram and gradually build up from that regards and reach adult dose by two to three years. That's similar to what we discussed about the female induction. The follow-up again, if the testis size increases, it means there is a reversibility which is happening and you can look at testosterone towards the end. So what is happening at day 20? What is your testosterone level? If it is good, it means you are at the right dose. You continue the same in that regards. If phallic size will increase, testicular volume will not increase. That is what we have already discussed and there will be no curling of pubic hair, which is a HCG effect directly. So androgen options most commonly we use is testosterone enanthate, 50 to 100, go up to 300 monthly. The other option is a 12 weekly preparation. We had a couple of patients who were on Serinos depot, which is a thousand milligram, which you give over 12 weeks. So this is more like a lantus. So it is more like a long acting. This one is more like a short acting. So this may be better for older children. After they reach 18 years of age, we will prefer this one. Then gel not good for pubertal induction and oral not recommended for pubertal induction. So I would say start with a uh, four weekly and then after 18 years, go to a 12 weekly preparation is what we are talking about. Now, testosterone, as I said, will cause suppression of LH. Will the same patient that comes at some, at five years of age, hmm. micro and genital difference. Yeah. Can you go for 
no 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 i will give testosterone that I simple test yeah yeah we'll give testosterone yes. same so by the if this is delayed diagnosis but we'll give testosterone can this die at any age yes yes it can so now if the lh is low it can theoretically suppress spermatogenesis this is what we have was a discussion that if you give testosterone spermatogenesis may be affected later on but this was a trial in which people thought that okay let's start with fsh let's start with fsh and then go forward and what they found interestingly that if you give a fsh pre treatment the congenital forms may have a better outcome but this is only a temporary phenomena we don't know what's happening 10 years later on so theoretically if you want you give fsh first then you give lh and then continue but somebody affordability issue you can use testosterone which is good enough so this is one thing which was there so european association then the specific issues about adults and this is also important about how to achieve fertility now of course the fertility options in that perspective are discussed are gnrh so dr yutika talked about the pulses which are given so you can give 9 to 2 to 120 minute pulse not available in india lot of work in europe and china has got lot of publications in that regards hcg is what we always has very easily available but always combine hcg with hmg now what is hcg hcg is basically human chorionic gonadotropin it is nothing but lh it acts on the lhcg receptor in fact the lh receptor is now named lhcg receptor hmg as dr yutika said is largely fsh it also has got some lh but the amount of lh required for boys is much more so you have to give separate hcg and separate hmg in girls you can use maybe just hmg as we were discussing ratio of 1 is to 1 here you need thousands of unit of hcg sperms can happen by 6 months pregnancy by 12 months but if somebody has pre pubertal onset which means most of our cases congenital forms who have complete and who had received treatment with testosterone these are theoretical talks they have a poorer response but in my experience we have around 20 25 patients who have become uh, uh, pregnant uh, the wife became pregnant was typically 9 to 12 months is the time so you have to tell them there will be a lag first once you give the testicular volume will start to increase once testicular volume reaches around 6 to 8 ml that is the time you start doing the semen analysis now many of our patients have actually become spontaneously fertile even without ivf or iui so it is a good modality 9 to 12 months you be patient but if they break in between again the problem will be there you have to start from zero so you have to tell this has to be there other big problem is that once you start them their erectile dysfunction will come up because otherwise you were giving a spoon fed baby was fed that okay testosterone is being given from outside here they have to produce so immediately the testes will not produce that much testosterone so we always say okay after marriage let's not rush to this treatment continue testosterone for 6 to 12 months once things are stabilized then you switch over to hcg then it will be because then you tell them that there will be some erectile issues which will come up because testosterone level will take a month or so to stabilize in that regards so hcg conventional hcg is good enough there is no role of recombinant or no advantage of recombinant because the cost is many times more and hmg you have to start in congenital form fsh you have to start in conventional form now you have to stop testosterone a few weeks before you start it because otherwise the whole purpose is defeated on one hand you are stimulating the other you are suppressing and then you start at 2000 3 times a week monitor with testosterone levels after 2 months target is 400 and above so you give at cg 2 months later check the testosterone and if it's not increasing increase further and then you can go to 5000 hmg again conventional don't increase the cost the rough cost of both preparation is roughly 5 to 10000 per month and if you talk about a year maybe a lakh that is what you have to tell them but there is a 80% chance of fertility from zero sperm to this it is a very good outcome i would say which can happen and hcg of course you have to give earlier 6 months after hcg in acquired form and you monitor it with sperm counts and increase the dose if there is no particular response which is happening so fertility treatment if you have acquired cause you start with hcg if you have a congenital cause both hcg and hmg after 8 weeks less than 400 testosterone you have to increase up to 5000 and then do semen analysis if it's normal do semen analysis after 3 months if sperms are less than 5 million then you have to add hmg and then see what is going on from there 
no increase, increase the dose, nothing, then nothing is going to happen. So basically, you have to follow up both testosterone and the sperm count. But if after everything, you have gone up to a high dose of FSH, high dose of LH, nothing happening, 10-15% cases, nothing is going to happen. So don't unnecessarily waste their money. But if sperm is more than 5 million, it may be normal pregnancy if the levels are high or ART may be thought in that regards. Now, if the patient becomes pregnant and you want to have again pregnancy after two years, in that case, you continue, otherwise you stop. So this is how you go. So basically, HCG, HMG in the beginning for congenital, monitor testo, monitor sperm count, and then go forward as to decide about treatment in that regard. So just to summarize, the overall treatment in the newborn period, I would say testosterone is the best treatment, 25 milligram, three week, three doses every month, induction with testosterone, gonadotrophin mainly for fertility, a debate whether you treat them for delayed puberty and whether you use for micropenis, I would not be using at the moment, mainly testosterone is good enough from that perspective. So I think we'll just end there. So hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, if you identify at the time, you will have a good outcome. Avoid HCG alone in congenital forms, gradual induction, and fertility is possible with gonadotrophin treatment. So I think um, this was uh, the discussion we want to discuss. So today we had a very good case discussions to begin with, and there were five uh, case conundrums followed by discussions on growth, type 1, type 2, CHH in male and female, and all those parameters were there. So if you have any questions, we'll take. So Sertoli cells surround the germ cells. Yeah. Within their lacunae are the germ cells. So if Sertoli cells are small, if your bodyguard is small, you will be exposed. Then anybody can come and go and hit you on that regards. So once you give FSH, the Sertoli cells become big and they yeah. surround and then save them. So there is a blood testis barrier and that barrier is largely via the Sertoli cells. The germ cells, there is a barrier as well. So that's why they are preventing you from that. So in congenital, yeah. Typically three to four months. Three to four. Yeah, yeah. No, if you actually want to start, you can start simultaneously also because HCG is not going to start immediately. You're talking about the fertility option. Yeah. yeah. So fertility option, both can be started together. In puberty, we say HMG for a few months and then HCG. But fertility, because HCG immediately will not cause testosterone production, by that time, Sertoli cells, so Sertoli cells will respond better than Leydig cells. They will start to grow and protect. So that is why this there. Is blood testicular barrier in Sertoli cells? No, no. I just made a... So blood testis... Yeah. No, no. No, there is a blood test is now I'm trying to say there's a blood test is barrier outside. There's a germ cell test uh, barrier also, tissue which is there. So this is a tissue fluid barrier with Dr. Yutika is saying. So that is for the Sertoli cells. Is, uh, even the LH, they cannot go inside the radial follicle. There are gap junctions between the follicular cells. So from one cell to another cell, it's, it's not diffusing like it is diffusing for other cells. There is no tissue fluid within the gap in follicle. It's a mass of a lot of cells. You can, it's the largest cell of the body. When we take the egg out, we can microscopically see the tumorous. It is this big. But there is no tissue fluid within it. Yes. To say reversibility, how yeah. does the world just so if it was 1 ml, even if it goes to, I would say 6 to 8 ml. And the problem is that sometimes they are reversible, but they are not good enough. They will produce some testosterone, but not much. We had a patient who was on follow-up right from 14 years of age, but now at 25, 26, he suddenly had some testicular volume increase up to 6 to 8. When we stopped testosterone, his testosterone was like 90, 100. So he's not producing enough. So maybe he has got 10% neurons. So I would say it is, unless they produce good amount of testosterone, as I said, 400, 
आई एल सी हिज नॉट गुड एनफ टू प्रोड्यूस फर्टिलिटी ऑल्सो नेचुरल फर्टिलिटी and they will respond much better to hcg because their testicles is already in a way they are producing something so they will respond much earlier to hcg in that sense but they will not spontaneously conceive yeah unlikely so i think there one question about uh, uh, hcg in, in undescent testicles no because as i said it will damage the germ cell because intratesticular testosterone will go up we said exogenous testosterone will cause a problem when you have 100 times here from the testicles what will happen is of course something to worry 